We're gonna start, like I said, with making our carbon fiber handguard. Um, although milling out the carbon fiber handguard, either using a drill press or using the CNC, which I'm gonna do and just kind of give hints at how you could do with the drill press. Um, it doesn't require a full 3D drawing. Uh, I went ahead and did a 3D drawing anyways because this is a really expensive material. Uh, I think for 12 inches uh, at the time of the making, it was like 100 bucks for shipping. Um, and then if you needed longer than 12 inches like I do, you actually have to buy 72 inches, which is over $300 plus shipping, almost 400 after that. Um, so it's definitely not a cheap material. Um, like I said, I got it from Clearwater Composites. It just so happened that they had a perfect octagonal um, carbon fiber tube in both glossy and matte that was super close to the outside diameter of an aero precision bar nut. And so that's, uh, that's where I got it from because it minimized the amount of work that I had to do. But I want to make sure that everything's going to work before I order this material and I cut it. So I did a 3D uh, mock-up so that I could be sure I wasn't just going to waste cash. Um, let me just show you a couple things that I did first. So I'm going to hide this. So one of the things that was most important to me was uh, the barrel and the placement of the gas block and whether I would have clearance for, um, this is supposed to mimic the thickness of a M-lock nut uh, after it's underneath the handguard. I needed to make sure that I had clearance uh, so that I could actually use the M-lock accessories. So it turns out that I do, um, as long as I put it behind the, uh, the gas blocks top here. Um, I do technically have clearance on top of the gas block as well, uh, but I'd have to find the perfect length screw in order to make that work. So, um, but anyways, because I'm doing a adjustable gas block on this particular build, um, I'm actually going to cut the handguard so that most of the gas block is actually visible and accessible. And that's what this is. Um, I basically drew a side profile of what I kind of wanted my front edge to be like, nice aesthetically pleasing. It fully covers the gas block at the bottom. It exposes most of the gas block at the top. And then I can Boolean difference this poly surface and take this out of it. And that is what's going to leave me the actual aesthetic that I will be going for. <clears throat> so I think that looks pretty cool. And then that also allowed me to start laying out where I wanted my M-lock slots. Like I said, the only ones that I was really worried about uh, clearance on were the ones upon the top. And so I was able to lay those out behind the end of the gas block. The ones on the side, I laid out to where they're pretty close, but nice and aesthetically pleasing. They're equal on either side, but they are not in the same location as the ones on the top. And again, the bottom, I wasn't worried about placement. Uh, they are also not in the same linear location as the ones on the side and the top, um, but instead are more optimized for uh, where I want to potentially put a bipod if my idea does not work out with the one that mounts to the sides that we're gonna build. I also didn't want to have a ton of M-lock slots going down the whole um, carbon fiber Handguard, one reason is I just didn't want to cut all those. Carbon fiber is really aggressive on tools, even the little burrs that we're going to be using, which are fairly cheap. Uh, I just didn't want to deal with it because I didn't need them. And I also kind of like the, the look of the carbon fiber being solid. Um, the other thing that I did is I measured out where the, the bar nut is and where my screw holes need to be. Um, the screw holes are actually 45 degrees compared to where the uh, the bar nut has the gas tube going through, and so they will actually sit on these areas, uh, the flats at the 45s, uh, not on the top and sides and bottom like we have the M-lock slots. But again, this was just to mock it up to make sure that everything was going to work. But when we actually mill it, uh, we are going to make a jig that holds the octagonal shape uh, and positively registers it into the jig so that I can rotate it to any of the eight surfaces. And I'll always be milling along the top. So we won't actually have to do any milling from the side. We'll just like, we'll mill these and then we'll rotate it and we'll mill these two. And then we'll rotate it and we'll mill these three and then we'll rotate it and we'll mill some more. 
um, screw holes. So basically it's mill, rotate, mill, rotate eight times um, until you have all of your, your sections. And then how are we going to mill this complex shape at the front? Um, I'm probably not. I'm probably just going to do a, a mill a like super shallow reference line on this surface, the top. I'm gonna to mill a super shallow reference line on this side surface and a super shallow reference line on this bottom surface. Then we're just gonna move, we use a Dremel probably to cut out the bulk and then a spindle sander um, to sand that to perfection. Carbon fiber does like being sanded, um, but obviously uh, that dust really is not great for us, so we'll do it outside with the respirator on. But that's the general idea, design work done. When we come back, we'll actually start uh, modifying parts. Okay, so I have measured off 14 inches, which is what I need. I'm gonna cut outside of this line to give myself a little extra, um, but carbon fiber is sketchy stuff, uh, the dust, and in the universe's uh, sense of humor, it decided to make it like being abraded as a cutting method. So obviously our favorite way to cut it creates dangerous bad dust. So I'm doing this outside and I will be doing it with a respirator so don't breathe this stuff in. I'll put that on and we'll get going. Since this will be the end that we end up sanding, this will be the nice flat end we will use for the barrel nut end. Okay, our next step that we are going to take is to thin down this um, barrel nut so that it actually fits inside of our carbon fiber tube. Um, it is currently at 1.8 inches in diameter. The in, an inscribed circle inside the octagon uh, of our carbon fiber tube is 1.77, so there's 30 thousandths of an inch, maybe a little more to get it nice and f uh, fitting, but about 30 thousandths, so 30 second of an inch that we need to take off. So it's about 15 thousandths um, radius reduction or 30 second of an inch diameter reduction. Um, let me go ahead and cut this off at the pass uh, before people go, oh, but what if we don't have this fancy little metal lathe tool that you have? Well, yeah, that sucks. Um, but I will give you ideas on how you could do this with different tools. So for one, find a way to chuck it into a drill press or a, uh, a wood lathe, and then just hold a file to it as it spins and constantly be taking measurements to ensure that you're removing just 15 thousandths of an inch and you're removing it equally from this edge as you are that edge. That's one way to do it. Um, I'd obviously rather do that on a, a wood lathe because I could have a tail stock and make like a, a cone on each end that sort of pushes in and holds it centered. Um, the other way that you could do it is just by hand. You could clamp it uh, like this into a vise and then at all four of the locations where you've got the screws. You can hand file it, watching to make sure that your lines where you expose the aluminum stay parallel so that you're removing equivalently. Um, and just file it down and keep measuring until you filed 15 thou at all four of those locations. And then split the difference and file it at the halfway marks between each of those, again, 15 thou down. Um, the reason for that is the inscribed circle that needs to fit inside our octagon only touches the octagon at those eight points. So those are the, the sole eight points that you've actually got to hit, that's it. So that's how I do it um, if I didn't have uh, this metal lathe. And to be honest, uh, even my metal lathe didn't want to do this. You can actually see that I've got shims um, of these metal uh, pieces here shimming up my headstock as well as the tool in the tool rest. So getting kind of sketchy. Um, and the reason I had to do that is the swing over my uh, cutting gantry is actually only 1.75 inches. This is currently at 1.8 and we're finishing up at 1.77. So no matter what, it wasn't gonna fit under. So I had to shim everything up. Luckily uh, it worked out for me else. I would also uh, would have had to find an alternative way to do this. 
So let's see though if it's cutting evenly across the whole face of this. just wanted to do a skim pass to see where it was hitting to see if it was you know perfectly uh, put in and it looks like we're a little tiny bit off but it's let's do another pass and let's see because it literally just skimmed there let's do uh, where were we I just probably should have looked at what we were at okay so I was at uh, 16 so let's go back out and let's go in to thou. perfectly uh, evenly removing material so it was on there pretty straight and uh, and centered so I'm, I'm happy enough with that so that was at 18 we'll move it back uh, and what I'm gonna do is so that's uh, if I went in two thou that's four thou removed so if I was at 180 uh, we're now talking about four thou down from that. Um, so one, seven, nine, six. So I'm going to keep uh, working my way through. I'll show you one pass. And then if I don't stop it, I'll actually just reverse course, go in and go back. Um, but I'll show you, I'll show you that. Uh. <laughs> be at a point where uh, I'll be happy with the diameter so I'm gonna pull it out of here and I don't really I was doing two thou depth so four thou total um, per cut I don't really want to take it out uh, unless I have to because these things do not perfectly go back concentric so kind of where you have it is where you kind of need to keep it um, so I was kind of measuring with calipers uh, as I went, because I really want it to be good to go when I pull it off. And then what we're looking for is that it fits inside. Ho, 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 ho. And look at that. It fits in perfectly, and there is just absolutely minimal movement. I mean, tiny, tiny bit, but that is perfect. Very happy with the result. Um, just in case anyone literally copies this, um, the final diameter that I went with, uh, which I have my bigger calipers here, but we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, it was 1762. So I basically gave it uh, eight thousandths of a smaller diameter 
than the inscribed circle of our carbon fiber, and that's what's going to give me my clearance. So it fits nicely, uh, and then the other reason that we do that is because I am going to sandblast this and coat this to get our, uh, our nice surface back. But that's a wrap. Success so far.